I came to India with the focus of starting a cultural exchange program between youth from India and Scandinavia. On my travel around India, I visited many different villages. Very soon I learned about some programs being conducted by Christian missionaries, which caught my attention and interests. While talking with the villagers, I found that many have converted into Christians. I wondered, what could Christianity offer that Hinduism could not? My question raised a lot of suspicions from the village heads and the priests towards me. When I first converted to Christianity, I got 4,000 rupees from the church to use in my agriculture. That was the reason that I converted. They promised that I could become a priest, but after finishing the procedures, they didn't give me the task. I was only trained to convert people to Christianity and was told negative things about Hinduism. As Christians, we were not allowed to be with Hindus because they perform pujas using mantras. The Christians say that the mantras bring out the evil in people, that the devil is within them. Uh, how many years uh, were you Christian? 20 years. 20 years? <laughs> I am 22 years old. I was Christian the first 20 years of my life. We have been taught since childhood that Hindus are evil people possessed by devils and demons. We were told not to play with them or talk to them. We were not allowed to enter their homes or eat their food in case the evil entered into us. Life between Hindus and Christians is full of hate. I used to be very afraid of the Hindus. Our church performs healings. Every two weeks there will be big gatherings with other churches from the district and priests come from abroad to speak, preach and give healings. They tell us, amongst other things, that the power of the evil will possess us if we don't go to the church or come for these big gatherings. The church in the village next to ours gives money to the people for their conversions, so many people are tempted to accept Christianity. Three main groups of Christians are working in India. The Catholics, the Protestants and a third group who masquerade as Christians, but I would say are a type of mafia extorting money and using violence against villages to further their own ends. And this last group is the largest. I was taught in the Christian missionary school that to be a Hindu is very bad and to be a Christian is good. We were not allowed to learn the traditional Indian language and were stopped from singing the national anthem. Even though I am a Hindu, I had to participate in the Christian prayer in the church every day, but I didn't go for confession. And because of this, I was treated very strictly. I believe that the Christians are here in India because they want to destroy the whole Hindu culture and religion. When I first came to Dang, there was no Christians here. I soon realized that education was a better method. So I started a missionary school. We received money from various NGOs in Europe and the Spanish organization called Manos Unidos. We even got financial support from the bishop in Germany. We convert people in large groups so that an individual doesn't start to feel lonely in his or her village. Ah, malaria, typhoid and so many patients. Now uh, uh, most of patients come to the complaint of uh, diarrhea and vomiting. We have diseases here in this area, such as leprosy, skin diseases, malaria and malnutrition. 60% of our patients come to us when they are very sick and more difficult to treat because they first go to the Christian church for healings and other witch doctors who promise them healings and then after a period when they are not getting better but worse, then they come to us for treatments. From threats, bribes, promises, to simple mind games, all three groups use different methods to convert India into Christianity. 
The missionaries are taking advantage of the poverty, illiteracy and innocence of the villagers. I also observe such an act in almost all of the slums in the urban areas. It is of common knowledge that the churches buy conversions of $12 a head. Many of the benefits are provided only in the beginning to lure the villages to convert. But after a while it ceases. Missionaries prefer group conversions. After conversion, people are told to keep away from Hindus, even away from the family members who have not yet been converted. The missionaries make the converts believe that even talking to a Hindu makes him or her possessed by devils. Once I was called to a village for some antenna work. When my two friends and I had finished our work, we passed the local church on our way to the car. There were about 250 poor people waiting to go inside the church. Three priests in long white robes were ordering these people to step on pictures of different Hindu gods which they had placed on the steps of the church. This was to prove that they had renounced the Hindu gods by converting into Christianity. Later, it came to my knowledge that they were also ordered to burn pictures of our Hindu gods. My friends and I were very shocked because if you step on pictures of Hindu gods, it's very difficult to return to the Hindu faith. Poor people choose to become Christians because the church promises them advantages, things that would take the Indian government a long time to deliver. And they promise them healing from all diseases just by coming to the Sunday prayers in the church. We got converted to Christianity because our son was very sick. We were promised that he would be healed in the church. After seven years, our son was still very sick, so we decided to reconvert back to Hinduism. Now our son is not sick anymore. There were big church meetings once a month held by foreign priests. In these, they would tell us not to go into a Hindu house where Hindu rituals were performed. We were told not to chant Hindu mantras and not to dress in the traditional Indian way. Christian women are not allowed to wear bindis and bangles and everything else that we traditionally wear as Hindus. We should not take any food from Hindus either. We were told that we could eat meat from cows and pigs, but we never started to do that. Since we became Hindus again, we are not welcomed by Christian people. Hmm. In my district, 95% of the populations are Christians now. They vote for the Congress party, which is governed from abroad in the West. Many times I have attended big Christian church gatherings with 15 to 20,000 people. They perform healings. Sometimes I have brought a sick friend but they will never take that person for healing. They only use people who are instructed to act sick and then pretend to be healed. After these meetings, the priest drinks alcohol, uses bad language and talks about women. A while ago, there was a report in the newspaper exposing a priest, pastor and his helpers who took advantage of the women in a church. During prayers, the lights went out and the women were raped. It was a big scandal. The Christians create anti-Hindu and anti-national feelings, and they are changing the Hindu culture. No. It is very easy to become a priest. Once in a while, a foreign priest will come from abroad, such as Europe and USA. He will give seminars of two weeks' length. After the seminar, participants can open a church in any village they feel like. We go to different villages, perform healings, talk about Jesus, and pray together with the people. That is how we convince them to convert. We have around 200 churches in our district. Jesus is the truth, and Hinduism is evil. The missionaries perform large healing ceremonies, 
and supposedly sick and infirm people are brought up on stage for a miracle cure. To prove that they have indeed given up the Hindu fate, they are made to mutilate, deface and step on pictures of Hindu gods. My experiences in India and the things I witnesses in the name of Christianity left me with a very uneasy feeling. I saw aggressive men forcing a fundamentally flawed belief based on fear and manipulation on the lives of innocent people. I saw people with a rich cultural history dating back more than 5,000 years being destroyed. 